hey guys, does this happen to you? You play in Dyson Sphere program, and you built all these extra smelters. You think you're good, but no, the uh, the belt just can't deliver the goods fast enough. So guys, that's why I put this guide together. This is Max Efficiency Belt Guide for Smelters. Thank you so much, and welcome to Dragonmore Gaming, where we're giving you all the tips, tricks, tools, and tactics to get the most out of your games. So in this Max Efficiency Belt Guide for Smelters video, we're going to be going over each of the different recipes that a smelter can make, and what all the different, you know, how many smelters you need for each one of these uh, goods, so that you're getting the most out of it. Uh, so you're not, so you're getting the full belt, and also so you don't make too many and waste your time. So first off, uh, and just to help you guys out, I just went ahead and also put all this in a written guide uh, that I'm going to have a link down in the description. So that's going to be like your quick reference, your cheat sheet. Uh, you know, download a copy of that, you know, save the link, whatever you need. You can always refer back to this video or back to that cheat sheet just to, you know, give you the quick answer. So first off, the belts move at different speeds, right? So I have Mark 1, Mark 2, and Mark 3 belts. And just to show you, so the Mark 1 belts can carry 6 goods of any type. Six per second. Mark twos can carry 12 a second, and the Mark threes can carry 30 seconds. So you can see those are the ones over here really humming along. So the idea here is that we want to carry, you know, the belts only carry so much good, so we want to make sure we make enough buildings so that we don't have too many buildings and waste our time, and we don't have too few so that we're not being as efficient as we can. So, so something simple, just as an example, the first one, so the iron ingot, uh, uses one good, produces it every one second, and produces an iron ingot every second. So very simple math. So on a Mark I belt, for example, it's six goods, and each one of those is one second, so you need six smelters. You need 12 smelters for Mark IIs, and you need 30 smelters for Mark Threes. So pretty simple math, but then uh, each some of these goods, they get the timing is different, especially the titanium, that'll be a little bit different. So we're going to go through all these in order. So first I'll do all the Mark 1s. So the first Mark 1 is the iron ingots, and you'll need six iron ingot smelters to fully utilize a Mark 1 belt. Magnets take one and a half seconds, so you need nine smelters to fully utilize Mark 1 belt. Copper is the same as iron, so it also needs six. Another easy recipe, stone brick, also six smelters. So next is glass, and this is where it starts getting a little bit different. So glass is the first one that the pattern shows that it takes more, it's no longer a one-to-one. -one. You put in two rock, you only get one glass out. So a couple things to show you, So and I include this on the cheat sheet as well. So the input, uh, I, I try to do most of my measurements on the input. Uh, so for this one, it's six. Uh, smelters that you need to fully utilize that Mark 1 belt. Uh, but then the output, you see it's, in, it's, uh, it's not making as, you know, it's not fully saturating the belt on the output. And this will start happening more when you get into these more complicated goods that take a lot more things. So, uh, uh, But if you're looking to fully utilize the output belt as well, you can actually double this number. So by doubling it, I mean that now you can go to 12 smelters for your output belt. But again, the input belt still can only support six. So to do that, we have to double up on the out, on the input. So you take a second belt of the stone, and just, for example, coming out of here. And what I like to do is just have it raised in the air slightly, right? Use your up arrow key and then come right over top of the other belt. And then have it merge down to the next smelter. So as you can see here, what's going to happen is that the first six are getting all of their stone from the first belt and then the second belt going over top doesn't actually enter the system uh, of smelters until the next six so right here and then you'll notice that once these start filling up this will actually fill out a max level you know mark one belt of the uh, the six per second so it'll take it a moment to, to get a filter it all down there but yeah so here we go so we got our first one off the line here. So here's our first uh, one from that last one. So gets all the way through here, and you'll see fully saturated Mark One belt now using 12 smelters. So there you go. Next up is energetic graphite, or just graphite for short. And this one's another two to one ratio. So just like the glass, you'll need six uh, smelters for your input. And if you want to do it the same way and double up 
uh, on your inputs and do 12, uh, that'll fully saturate the outgoing belt too. So, that, so this one's the same as the glass. So steel is a 3 to 1 ratio, meaning that you'll still only need 6 on the input side, uh, but you'll notice that the output is even slower uh, because it's taken you know, even more goods to make just the one steel. So if you wanted to do an outgoing belt full of steel, you could do the same thing with glass, only it'll take 18 smelters to do the output. So you can triple up the, uh, the inputs on three different belts for Mark 1. Uh, although I might recommend you know, waiting for Mark 2s or Mark 3s to, to really do that. But, uh, uh, but just to give you that information, Mark 1 belts do six, uh, six smelters for steel. Silicon ingots, or high purity silicon, also a 2 to 1 ratio, so another 6 on the input, so 6 smelters, and then 12 if you wanted to double up on the output. Titanium, again 6, and it's a 2 to 1 ratio, so again you'll need 12 on the output. Diamonds is another uh, one that takes 2 seconds, so you'll need 12 smelters for this one, uh, but it is the same input and output, so 12 smelters. Now for the alternate diamond pattern, and this is the one that uses the uh, kimberlite ore, you see here. This particular one, the best, uh, the best smelters to get 100% is really 4.5. Now, this is a special pattern where it actually creates more than the, you know, more than the input. So you'll notice that the input belt is getting backed up while the output belt is, you know, fully saturated. So, to help combat this, this one might be good to double up uh, to actually have two output belts. So let's see how that looks. So like I said, the best number is 9 for this alternate diamond pattern using the Kimberlite. Uh, and you would think that it looks fully saturated, here's 9, but the problem is this smelter right here, and it'll start backing up other ones, is it's full of diamonds and there's no room on the belt for it to deposit. So this is where we need to break out the belt into two separate output belts. So here again we do the similar trick that we did with the glass on the input, now we're doing on the output, where we have the one belt going over the other one so that we're getting more diamond out of this whole, uh, this whole setup. Now you'll notice that there's a, still a problem with this setup. So there will still be some backup because again it's trying to use four and a half of these smelters, but it's, you know, you can't divide a smelter in half. Uh, so this one will still get backed up because it's full of diamonds, but it won't stay backed up for very long, But it, and at the same time, the uh, this uh, smelter here, you know, will not be able to produce a whole amount, so there will still be a gap. So it's still not 100%, but for me this is considered good enough, right? Like, I just want you guys to get back into the game and playing again, so I think this is good enough. Now, if you want to go even further, and, and you want to have it 100% on both belts, there is a way to do that. So, uh, so let me show you guys using kind of a load balancer using the splitters. Okay, so it turns out you don't need a splitter, uh, but you can kind of see the, some of the jankiness that I had to do to get this to work. Uh, so you'll notice that it's four smelters on one belt. And then I want you to pay attention to the four smelters that are normal on the second belt. When you get to the very last smelter, to get it to deposit onto both belts, you just end up with two different sorters, right? Both of these sorters are taking the goods out. They're both taking diamonds out. And you can see I have the belt kind of come down for a second just so it can actually hit it uh, with, the sm with the sorter. And so you have two outputs from the same smelter and this is how you can divide a smelter in half, right? So that's 4.5 smelters per belt because this one, sure enough, has two outputs, so it's kind of like it's two halves of a whole. All right, so there's uh, your alternate recipe for diamond. So nine smelters. Crystal silicon, uh, when it's made in a smelter, is another uh, one to one ratio, so the input and the output will be the same. Uh, it does take two seconds, so it'll be 12 smelters to get full utilization on Mark 1 belts. So, uh, so 12 both in and out for this one. And next is the fun one titanium alloy with three inputs to a smelter. So for titanium alloy, uh, it takes so four titanium ingots, 
four steel, eight sulfuric acid, and that gets you four titanium alloy. Now, that if you, you know, least common denominator, it's, uh, you know, divide all those by four. So it's one to one to two to one, right? So one titanium, one steel, two sulfur, and it gets you one titanium, right? As far as the ratios go. Uh, so the key point here is that you need uh, a minimum, I would say, of nine smelters. So this is at the tier one level, uh, and so you might even already have uh, the tier two or even tier three belts by the time you get this. Uh, so I like to go for logistics very quickly to get the upgraded belts. Uh, so, uh, so I didn't do this one as tier one in my game, but uh, but if you want to do it, here it is. Uh, so the best efficient way for tier one belts is to do nine smelters, but that does not fully utilize uh, two of the belts. The steel and the uh, titanium are, are still slowing down, and of course the output as well. So what you can do is similar to like how we did the glass, you can add an additional row of just the sulfuric acid and get to 18. So let me show you how that works. So here it is with 18 smelters. Uh, again, so it's the same belt for the uh, steel and titanium. That just goes all the way down all 18 smelters. And you can see for the sulfur, I did that same thing uh, that I did uh, with the glass. That, so you have the second belt of sulfuric acid that comes, uh, just hangs out over the top and then enters the system after uh, the first belt is fully utilized, which for this is nine. So the tenth one, pops down the next belt and gets used up. So that's all 18 smelters and that's max utilization for tier one uh, titanium alloy. So you can see a full belt of titanium alloy. And the last one for the Mark I belts is the silicon ore recipe, which you know, I rarely if have ever used. Uh, I don't know that you guys will either, but if you want to use it, uh, converting 10 stone into one silicon ore uh, it does do it 10 every 10 seconds, so uh, yeah, so it's a one-to-one -one ratio again. So you just need six uh, smelters for silicon ore. So that's it. That's every recipe for the smelter using the tier one belts. And so this has been a max belt efficiency guide video. So uh, I hope this has been helpful for you guys. I'm going to be doing this, uh, you know, for for other things, and I definitely want to try to do the tier two and tier three belts too, uh, just because I know. <laughs> Those will be a lot faster and they'll have a lot more smelters, so that'll be interesting. Uh, so guys, uh, you know, make sure to check the description too, because uh, refer back to this video or, or even the little uh, cheat sheet that I made for you guys. Uh, that'll have it all written down for you, so you can just refer to that super quick just to see how many you know, how many smelters do you need. You just pop in there and it shows you just you know buy every resource what you need. So guys, uh, it, and if you want to hang out more and uh, and chat with me and you know check out more guides as they come out, uh, make sure to join the Discord server. I have a link for that in the description as well. And uh, and so guys, I think this has been great. This has been super fun. So uh, I'll be doing more of this. So guys, uh, thank you so much for watching. Stay awesome, and I'll see you next time.